Okay, so now we're in the, the final part of this lecture, which is system three. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the loading to create a voltage drop problem. And then we're gonna fix it through the use of a capacitor bank and, and also a regulator. And what we'll do first is we'll go ahead and just save system two. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the model again. And then I'm going to do the save as and just go ahead and change this as save this as sys3. All right. So to load this system up a little bit more, I'm going to go back to the substation and I'm going to redo the load allocation. And so if I go back to the control point and edit the data, what I'm going to do, instead of having this be 5,000, I'm going to make this 6,000 kilowatts. And I'm just going to update the K bar. And then what we're going to do is we're still going to allocate using KWH. And so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and make sure I've got the uh, load allocation function selected. I'm going to execute the load allocation. And if I look at the results, then what I'm going to see is I've got more load allocated in this case, um, which is going to put more stress on the circuit. So if I basically show that I have the new voltage drop results here, but let me just run this one more time. And what you see now is these values are showing up in red. Remember when I set up the voltage drop analysis in analysis manager for the colorings for the voltage problems, I got this set up for 118 as a low voltage threshold. So it's not only showing up as far as the elements that are low voltage being red, but it's also kind of showing up in the calculated values as well and what we want to do is we want to find a way of actually getting this above the 118 volts. So one way we could do this is by adding a capacitor. And this is what we're going to be talking about in the next couple of lectures in class is, you know, what's going to be the operational effect of capacitors and how would we actually determine location and size of these units. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this at the end of line section L1. And so what I could do in this case, I can choose this little icon, add capacitor. I can go ahead and I could add this to the circuit in this case. And then as far as setting this up, if I double left double click on this element, I could change the name. I could change the name on here to cap one. I've got three phase. Typically utilities would just put three phase capacitors out there. They would probably not they would probably rarely put out single phase or two phase. Um, you typically like to keep this balanced. Uh, you can see that the parent L1, I can go ahead and select the naming on here. Um, this is going to be a shunt bank. Most banks are shunt banks. And then for the KVAR value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up where it's a total of 900. So go ahead and select 900. And what this is going to do is, is put the values in there for phases A, B, and C in this case. You can make this switched if you want. Um, you could actually set this up where there's like a voltage control, which we'll talk about later in class. But one thing you want to make sure of, you need to make sure this capacitor bank's actually on. So now I've got the capacitor in the circuit. Let me just double check this. It didn't seem like the name got updated. Okay, you got 900 in here. So it looks like we're okay. Um, and then what I could do is I could rerun this. Note, I don't have to rerun load allocation in this case. Um, I, I basically got my loads already set. And I'm now adding the, the capacitor bank in here. Uh, I could rerun load allocation, but again, the loads have already been allocated. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the voltage drop. 
and you can see what this does is it now it pushes the voltages up higher. We'll talk in class about why this is going to be the case, but this would be one type of solution would be to put a capacitor bank in the circuit. So we, we do get an improvement in the voltage profile in the situation. Something else we could also do in here as well is we could also do voltage regulation at the output of this substation transformer. Now there's a couple different ways we, we typically would run power flows. One would be instead of having the substation at going into this transformer here, we would get rid of this transformer and just simply have the output of the substation be the 12.47 kV. There's really no reason we need to model the substation transformer. I just kind of did that for sake of completeness. But there's no reason we need to model this transformer. The, the thing you run into is if we've got this transformer in the circuit, you can see that the source, the source could be a regulated point, right? But if you were to look at this transformer data, there's nothing on here which we could use to regulate voltage. We need to have another device for doing that and, and that would be a voltage regulator. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna add a voltage regulator right after this transformer. So I, what I'm gonna need to do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and select this and what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna insert this between an existing transformer in the line is that there's another type of a windmill command you need to use, which is called an insert after button. And you can see this is uh, boxed off here in red above. So what this is gonna do is gonna insert something after the element I have selected and whatever was downstream of the element before is it's gonna get put after the, the element I'm inserting now. So I, when it gets, since I have the substation selected then, what you can do is you can select, the, select this insert after thing, and then it gives you an option of what you want to insert. I'm going to select a regulator. And then if I would click on here, left click where I want this regulator to go, you can see what this is doing. It's adding this particular regulator now to the circuit. So now what I can do is I can set up the regulator parameters. So double click on that. I can change the, the name of the regulator. Now, here's, here's uh, something you've got to watch out for. Note if I've got the name of the regulator here is regulator 10, and for the control element, I've got regulator 10. I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this regulator. I'm going to change this to reg 1. Know what it does is it zeroes out the control element name. So the problem is I've got the, the change the name of the regulator, but now I don't have any type of control element um, linked in to this particular regulator. So what I need to do is I need to type reg one in here again um, to fix that. So let's go ahead and let's make sure we can see the label in this case. It's phases A, B, and C. The child element is L1, the upstream element, the parent element is the step down transformer. And now what I need to do is I need to change to make all these different settings in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead in this case and leave the voltage control level. Um, I'll see what I say. I'm gonna set this to 125 volts instead of leaving it at 126. I'm gonna change it to 125 because that's what I had in my write up. This is actually what I'm going to regulate the, the uh, customer side or the load side of the regulator to. Um, the regulator is in terms of volts on a base of 120 volts. And then as far as the details of the settings, I need to have a regulator size definition. So I've got to go into the equipment table and I've got to add uh, some regulator data. And let's say we're going to call this 7200 volt one phase. And then as far as the parameters for this particular device, 
Uh, let's suppose that the CT rating is 500 amps. Um, the current rating is 500 amps as well. I'm going to assume I've got a 10% boost, and that's a 10% boost corresponding to a total of 16 steps for that 10% boost. This also means you're going to have a 10% buck as well. And then let's set the bandwidth in this case to 2 volts. Um, so now, anyway, what I've got is I've got uh, the parameters entered in for this. I can go ahead and click OK. I'm not going to set up any line drop compensation. Uh, you could have line drop compensation in here, but I'm just going to set this regulator just to control on the load side of that particular regulator. But if I were going to put in the values for the line, I could actually get the line drop compensator set up. So I'm actually regulating the voltage right at the end of the line instead. Um, note that I'm modeling this as a YY ground connection. So if I have three single phase regulators are connected kind of like YY ground. And the, the usually you set these up where um, you have single phase regulators where um, all the phases are gonna be the same. Now you could also have this set up where you can have each phase with different settings. If you have this regulator in the substation, you typically operate this gang where you have the same tap setting for all the regulators. However, if this regulator is downstream from the substation, you would probably use this as um, single phase with different settings. Okay, so anyway, if I have one phase with all phases the same, it's basically the same as three phase controlled by phase. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now I've got a regulator in the circuit right here that's regulating to 125 volts. Let me go ahead and show the calculated data box for this. And what I can do is I can rerun the voltage drop. No errors, which is good. And you can see what the regulator is doing it's regulating to 125 volts. So on the output of the transformer, I've got a, about 122 volts, maybe a little bit higher. But what the regulator is doing now is it's boosting this up to 125. And because of this, what we're going to see further down the feeder is, is going to be a higher voltage. So this would be another thing we could do. Um, you know, if you wanted to see what the... the whether you need to have this capacitor in here or not, you could always switch this capacitor off and rerun the voltage drop. And you can see that it changes the voltages a little bit, but we probably didn't need to have that capacitor in there if, if we had this regulator in here instead. But anyway, it's just a simple, it's just a simple example. And so, you know, sometimes you just need one element or the other. You need the regulator or the cap, cap bank. Sometimes you, you might want to have both. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The capacitor bank has some other advantages as far as power factor correction and reducing the losses. Um, so anyway, let me just go ahead and turn this back on so I can just finish this up. Switch the bank on rerun the voltage drop. Okay, so now you see the effect of both these elements being in the in the circuit. If you want to see what the impact of all these voltage control elements are, you can select like something at the end of a line, like at this node one, you could go to the profiles. And what you see in this case is you see the voltage profile starting from the source and going all the way down to node one. And you can see what happens as the voltage drops down as it goes to the, as you go to the load side of this transformer, the regulator boosts it back up. As you go down the line, you get voltage drop. And then basically when you get to the node, you see what you get for the net voltage at this point. Uh, so you could actually, you know, do some simple voltage profile graphs as well. So anyway, this, kind of shows you know what uh, you can do you know as far as looking at issues with voltage and how you can try different things and see what the impact on the, the voltage is going to be. Um, 
one thing before I finish this up is you note know, if I look at the report, that the report that the report has a tap setting that's not an integer value. And a lot of times for planning purposes, we'll assume this infinite tap setting thing. We're gonna get taps that are not gonna be integer values. If you wanna make this a little bit more realistic, what you could do is you can go up to the settings for the analysis under analysis manager. And if you went to analysis options, you could set regulators. So you have integer steps. It'll change the voltages a little bit, but then when you look at the report, then you can see that the taps are at an integer position. So probably a lot of times for planning purposes, you might just run this as an infinite because you're just, you don't need to know exactly what the field tap settings are. Uh, you just, for planning purposes, kind of need to know what the bulge levels are. The problem is when you have a bandwidth of two volts, you, you're not gonna see these tap positions necessarily change that much until the bulge goes out of bounds. Uh, and so there's always a little bit of uncertainty in what these tap positions are gonna be anyways with respect to what you see in the field.